Oh god. That's time I was in the All right, so on the board, this is the list of the derivatives that you need to know right now. And of course, as we go through this chapter, we're going to be adding more and more to this list. Anyway, if you look at no. No. Look at this. Look at this right here. You're not looking, Amano. Right here. There's a list of derivatives. Oh, look right here. Derivatives list. These are all the derivatives that you need to know for the AP exam. You click on it, and bam. Nguyen, if you want to take a picture, you should take a picture of this. Oh, yes. This is right here. See? So, right now, we only know up to here. That's all we know. See? We call this the power rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, the six trick functions. That's all we know for now. Well, the camera can't see you. Are we a memory okay. for these? Hayaka, we can look at this. Okay, but then as we get through this chapter, you got to find the derivative of the six inverse trick functions. And then exponential and logarithmic functions. That's what we're learning in this chapter. In this chapter, we learn how to find the derivatives of all the functions. Wait, Oh, I see it. I see it in verses. No, that's the last one. That's shameless. Anyway, it's in the book. Sit down. <laughs> All of this is in the book, people. In fact, did the book give you this list right here? No. The book sucks. <laughs> I told you not to disrupt my class. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's go over the problems. Kick on camera. What? Okay. I am not here to entertain you. <laughs> Mr. Park, I swear you said you, you would do it for us. Okay, I'm sure we have a lot of questions. Now is the time to ask them. Number nine. Number nine. Oh, number nine? Yes, please. Number nine. It says spice of velocity. Are you serious? Yes, I you can't get you can't get a problem with this. You definitely can. Well, I couldn't. <laughs> okay, I see here. I you. Now your independent variable here is t now. Right? Because you have a yes. particle traveling on a number line. So time is your independent variable. So if you know the position equation, how do you get velocity? You take the derivative, right? Yes. So what do I see? I see I cosine box, yes. which is right over there. What is the derivative of cosine box? Negative sine box times the derivative of box, which is negative 3. Finished. And of course, then you got to simplify it, right? Like this negative and that negative cancel out, so you would write your answer like this. Or you want to simplify it even further and impress me. Sure? This is an identity right here. Sine of pi over 2 minus gorilla. Cosine of gorilla. Thank you. It's on the identity sheet, people. The co function identity. Yeah. Okay, we're in A B. Just leave your answer like this. <laughs> I thought somebody, Lee and Tanaka, when you came in for help this morning, you said you had to plug in a number. This, you don't plug in a number. We didn't know what T was. No, that was T is nine. No, I asked you to plug in a number for like number fifty-one. Okay, next. I'm sure you have other questions. Now, there's harder problems where you have box within box. So you got to use the chain rule twice. And there is actually one problem where you have box within box within box. You have the embedded boxes. OK, so that was the time to ask. Like, if I were you, I would ask what? That's not even the one. So everybody here can do 21 and 23. No. Let's do 21 and 23. What about anything before 21 and 23? 17. 17, that's a warm up. That's just stretching the muscle, 17. Okay, people, I'm going to tell you guys something. Why do we hear parts once? When you have a trig function to a power, I would highly recommend you rewrite it like that. Because that's what sine cubed x means, right? It means sine x quantity cubed. But this is the way we write it. But I would highly suggest rewriting it like that so you can clearly see that this is box cubed. So when you're doing your homework, this is what you should be doing, okay? So I see a product here. I'm going to use the product rules. 
So, derivative of the first, now, what do I see as the first? I see box cubed. I'm going to take the derivative of box cubed. I'm going to use this rule right here, right? So, 3 box squared times the derivative of that box, which is cosine x. Then you leave the second one alone. Plus, now you leave the first one alone times the derivative of the second. Now, what do I see as the second one? I see tangent box right here. So what is the derivative of tangent box? Secant squared box times the derivative of that box, which is 4. So if you don't multiply by the derivative of box, it's a fatal error already. So on, we're going to have a quiz coming up very soon. I think that's going to be Tuesday. I mean, no. Do I see you guys on Wednesday? No, that's the <coughs> SAT, you. Thursday. <coughs> okay, Thursday. You're going to get two points for getting the correct derivative, and then you got to duck two points. you got to simplify it. It's probably going to be a max equation. Okay, next. What about number 19? Can everybody do number 19? Yeah. What about number 20? Did I cite number 20? Can you do 21? Yeah. Can you do no, you got to simplify. Like, whatever can be factored out, you factor out. Okay, if I were you, I'd ask, I'd ask like, I would ask so many of these. Can you do 21? 20. I'm not going to do all. Can you do 21? If you need all, then you come in like Lee and Tanaka. And Leon, and I'm cutting me out. Okay, 21. <laughs> and Blakesley. Well, you didn't, see, if it didn't occur this morning, it didn't happen. Okay, sine squared. What did I just tell you? Whenever you have a trig function raised to a power, write it like that. So you can clearly see that you're dealing with box squared. Okay, but this problem is tougher. You know why? Because you have box within box, as you will find out. But it's not that hard if you just sort it up. Okay, box squared. What's the derivative of box squared? That's all you should be concerned with right now. Two box to the first, right? I'll put the one there. Times the derivative of box. Now, inside the box, what do I see? I see sine box. So if I'm going to take the derivative of box, I have to take the derivative of sine box, which is cosine box times the derivative of that box, which is 3. So that one you had box within box. And then of course everybody here can multiply the 2 times the 3 and get 6, right? So you know that's not going to be on the quiz because that's too easy to simplify. You know what kind you can get the kind on my worksheet? <laughs> Here, I can tell you what kind I like right here, the kind you can simplify. 14, 16, 18, 20. All of, those, all of those are all good. 14, 16, 18, 20. No. Okay, I'll do it. No. <laughs> well, it, well, if you were smart, wouldn't you ask the even problem since I'm going to correct it for correctness? Not effort now. Since I'm collecting this on Tuesday, this was last night's homework. I'm, I'm going to correct it for correctness. It's got to be correct. Not like you attempted it. Okay, shall we do 14 then? Yeah. Good choice. These guys are just shameless. You guys still feel ashamed? No. <laughs> We're 21st century kids. So nothing phases you? No. You don't care, right? You don't care if you don't make money. No, I do. <laughs> okay, here we go. What do I see? I see box to the negative 1. Do I know how to take the derivative of box to the negative one? Yeah, negative box to the negative two, negative two times the derivative of box. Oh, now that's easy. Cosecant x. Negative cosecant x cotangent x, and then negative cosecant squared x. Okay, right there you got two points. Now you want the other two points, you got to simplify that puppy. Mr. Park, I can't see anything to do. Okay. Well, then you're blind. <laughs> okay, what can, I, what can I factor out from these two terms? A negative cosecant x. What's going to be left? Co 
cotangent x plus cosecant x. And then oh. can that be this one and this one be combined together? Yes. So your final answer going to be cosecant x all over cosecant x plus cotangent x. Boom! Ah! Wait, what did you do? I kicked the board. <laughs> See, look, everybody can understand the calculus part. Mr. Park, I don't know how to simplify that. It just goes to show the weakness of our algebra skills. <laughs> okay, do you understand that negative times a negative equals a positive? That's going to be yeah. in today's movie now. Remember, that's a famous line in today's movie. Mm -hmm. A negative times a negative equals a positive. Why okay. is that on your poster? And then this cosecant is the same thing as cosecant. And then when you multiply two things together, what do you do with the exponents? Add them you add the exponents. What's negative 2 plus 1? one. That's why it's in the denominator. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay, it's next. 16. 16. That's shameless. I did an example like this last time on the board. Remember, and after class, Lee was asking about it. No. Mr. Park, that class seemed so long ago. Oh, I don't remember anything. Oh, is that no, what you're Monday. thinking? See, that's the problem with the schedule. No, you guys forget really everything. Okay, I see a product over here, so I'm going to use the product rule. Let's see if I can squeeze this in. Derivative of the first, leave the second one alone. Then you leave the first one alone. And then you multiply it by the derivative of the second. Now, what do I see? I see box to the form. What's the derivative of box to the form? Four box. Four, four, four box. box to the third times the derivative, times of, the derivative of that box, which is two. So if you don't put that two there, it's minus four already. You got to put the derivative. Box. No crinkling. Thank you. <laughs> see, even D doesn't like the crinkling. No idea. Well, she's just just do it. Hurry up. So <laughs> having been in the this class this whole year. Okay, now you gotta simplify this. Now, some of you are confused about factoring, and this is only with whole numbers. What, what, what's gonna happen when you have fractions and negative numbers? You gotta factor. What can be factored out? Uh, x to the look. You have an x squared here, and an x cubed there. I have a two x minus five to the fourth, and a two x minus. It's 5 third. What can I factor out? 2x minus 5 to the? Third. Very good. OK, now, what's going to be left if I factor that out? 3, three times oh, 2x minus 5 plus 8. 4 times 2 is 8, right? 8x. This is not magic. This is algebra 1a. This is algebra 1a. And then, of course, you simplify what's in the brackets, and what are you going to get? 6x minus 15 plus 8x. So your final answer going to be x squared, 2x minus 5 cubed, 14x minus 15. This is a good problem for the quiz. Plus, you're going to get one on, ten, on the, tonight's one anyway. See, now you make your number line. What goes on the number line? Zero. Wait, why are we making five? No, we're not making it now, but in the next chapter, after you take the derivative, you're going to make the number line. Because you need to know when the derivative is positive and negative, and that, that's what you're going to have to do. 5 halves and 15 fourteenths. But the, the only way you can get these values is you've got to simplify it. You've got to put it in factor form. That's why you spent all of these years taking algebra and pre-calculus. Can I erase this to, so that you can get more? I'm, why am I going to ask you? Just do it. Because we're filming. 18. <laughs> You're good at even numbers. Y equals 4. Now, square root. You want to leave it square root, or should I change it to the 1 half power? 1 half power. Okay, let's change it to the 1 half power. See, the only way you can get good at this is you've got to do a lot of problems, just like factoring. Oh, I hate factoring. Oh, God, sorry. Okay, so take the <laughs> derivative. I throw the 4 on the side like an unwanted pet, right? And I'll have box to the one half. Now, how do I take the derivative of box to the one half? One half box to the negative one half times the derivative of box. There you go. So you guys are trained. That's what you guys got to become. Trained seals. Seals. You know, baby seals. 
That's like a wall, right? One half box to the negative half times the derivative of that box, but that's easy. Secant x tangent x plus secant squared x. Okay, but now we gotta simplify this. Hey, this is this looks eerily familiar like the last problem. So four times a half is two. And then what about this? What can I factor out from these two things? A secant x, and what's gonna be left? Tangent x plus secant x. And then, hey, I can combine that with this. So your final answer going to be 2 secant x square root of secant x plus tangent x. Yes. You guys see that? Where does the tangent x plus secant x? So you go, this is to the first power, right? Yeah. If I multiply this times this, what do I do with the exponents? Uh, you yeah. add, what is negative half plus 1? One? <laughs> 1 half, which means square root, right? Yes. Yeah. You don't have to write the square oh, root. You can just write one half power if you want. Mm -hmm. But you got to add those exponents together. Okay, number 20. How many people got number 20? Wait, what's the answer? Is it negative? Get the correct answer. Well, oh, you tell me what the answer is. Is it negative? Part. Chang. This is for your letter of recommendation. Plus one. Say that again. Oh, so not close. <laughs> Anybody else? I was going to give you a bonus point. Lee? I don't know. Wait, is it negative 3x squared times one? No. What is this? Okay, you know what? I'm going to give this on the quiz. The exact same problem just to see if you can get it. I'm going to give this on the quiz. The exact same problem just to see if you can get it. Okay, now there's two ways you can do this problem. You can do the quotient rule, or you can rewrite the problem like this and use the product rule. So, what's your choice? Product. Think about it. Product. Yeah, I, I would rather do the product rule because quotient rule is kind of like, you know, you know how you guys are. So what do you guys want? I'll do either way. What do you want to do? Product. Okay, product rule it. So y prime equals, I see a product over here. Derivative of the first one, and leave the second one alone. At least get the two points, okay? Because some of you, your algebra is just terrible, yeah? I thought by after all that pre-calculus review, by the time you get there, your algebra should be like perfect already. Anyway, derivative of the first, leave the second one alone. Now you leave the first one alone. Now how do I take the derivative of the second thing? What do I see? I see box to the negative half. Negative half box. So negative half box negative to the negative three halves times the derivative of box, oh, which is two x. See, if you don't multiply it by that two x right there, that's a, that's a minus four right there. Okay, now let's see how to simplify this. Now, some of you, if your algebra is suspect, you're gonna feel it right here. Okay, can I cancel that one half and the two? Yes. yes, okay, now, I see a 1 plus x squared to the negative half here, and a 1 plus x squared to the negative 3 halves there, so what can I factor out? 1 plus x squared to the? Negative 3 halves. Very good. Was that a guess? No. Everybody see why you factored it out? Because now is the time to ask. You? <laughs> okay, let's go back to algebra 1. What if you had... What if you had 8x to the 4 plus 12x cubed? What can you factor out? Four. A 4x four to the 3. Okay, well, how come you don't factor out x to the 4? Why, why do you factor out x cubed? Because 3 is smaller than 4, right? Or do some of you factor out x to the 4? <laughs> I don't know. No, because 3 is smaller than 4. So, Mr. Park. If you have these two, how come you factor out x to the negative 3 halves? Because negative 3 halves is smaller than negative half. Right? No, no, so where are you going? What? Okay, let me draw a number line for you. Here's zero. Here's negative half. Here's negative 3 halves. Do you see that if you're further to the left, it's smaller? 
<laughs> no, I'm serious. You guys gotta understand this. Okay, so now, okay, you factor out the smaller exponent, but what's gonna be left? No. What's gonna be left? If I factor out this to the negative 3 half from this, what's going to be left? 1 plus x squared three. to one third. the? 1 third. Oh, I don't know. 1 third. And if you were in PCH last year, you should be ashamed of yourself. Thank you. Why is it? It's 1. Oh, you add the Because add when you multiply these two, you Shoot. add the exponents. This plus this is going to give you that. Yeah. You yeah. see, it represents. And then, if I factor this out from that, what's going to be left? Minus x squared, right? Um, Stare at that for a while. People, factoring out. Okay, here. How come you can do this? Tell me how. Okay. <laughs> two what? x. Two x plus. Three. How come you can do that? Well, you gotta do this. Fraction. Because it's got negative number and fraction. Oh, and negative yeah. fraction is like scary. It's like cool. I, do. I don't want to go in that room. <laughs> Kick, I'm not going in that board. Again. Don't make me. Kick the board. No, we didn't do any. We're not done yet. <laughs> anyway, do you guys know what factoring means? You factor out. It's the reverse of the distributive property. If I distribute this 4x cubed here and here, then shouldn't you get the original problem? So same thing here. If I take this and distribute it, you should get this. If I multiply this times this, you would add the exponents and get this, right? Okay. If I multiply this times this, you get that. And we leave it like that. No, we're not done yet. You gotta simplify that. Look at the brackets. Can I simplify what's in the brackets? Yes. What do you get? Run the fun. One. So your final answer is one plus x squared to the negative three halves. And you guys weren't even gonna ask this question. Yeah. I did. Box it. Now you can box that and run. <laughs> Or if you rather rewrite that as 1 over 1 plus x squared to the positive 3 halves, you can, but that, 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 that's the same thing. Can we do 19? So, well, look, everybody can do the, everybody can learn the rules of calculus, but you got to know how to do algebra. You guys already took three years worth of algebra. How can you not know? That's what I want to know. I hope you kept your receipt, because you guys, some of you should get your money back. I want my money back. Actually, not 19. 22. You need 23. Okay, I think we better do 20. Okay, 23 was the hardest one on last night's homework because you had box within box within box. You had like three layers of boxes. We better do 22 first, where you just have two boxes. Y equals 1 plus cosine 2x squared. Okay, so what do I see here? I see box squared. That should be easy, no? What's the derivative of box squared? Two. Two box squared. To the first, do I have to write the first column? Yes. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two box to the first times the derivative of box. Now, what is the box inside? I see one plus cosine box. I have to be able to take the derivative of one plus cosine box, oh, which yeah. is zero. Plus. And then what's the derivative of cosine box? Negative, negative box. sine. Oh gosh. Negative sine box. Times, times the, the derivative of that box, which is 2. True. And the only thing you can really do is put a negative 4 in the front of that problem. So that, that, that simplifying is not terribly exciting. Which means I wouldn't put it on my quiz, my test. I want you to demonstrate that you can do algebra. OK, let's do 23. How many people got 23? Notice I'm not even turning around. <laughs> hey, you wait for it. You did get it? Okay, now, look, I see cosine squared box over there. You know what I'm going to do? What did I tell you to do? Just 10 minutes ago. Do it like that. Anytime you have a trick function to a power, rewrite it like that. See how you have box within box within box? Cosine box, but then inside. Oh, the one plus cosine box squared, and then you got box cubed. Okay, here we go. The um, uh, overriding thing is box cubed. Don't look at anything else, just box cubed. What's the derivative of that? Three, Three box, so you gotta copy this whole box thing. Three box squared, right? Mm -hmm. Times 
the derivative of the box. Now, now you forget about the other part and you just look at what's in this box. What do I see here? I see 1 plus box squared. How do I take the derivative of 1 plus box squared? 0. And how do you take the derivative of box squared? 2 box to the first times the derivative of that box. Now, what do I see in that box? I see cosine box. How do I take the derivative of cosine box? Negative sine box times the derivative of that box, which is 7. Wow. And the simplifying is not that exciting. All you can do is put a 42 in the project. Negative 42 in the front. Okay, next. Okay, I heard. 24. 24. No, no, we don't need to do 24. That's easy. Oh, yeah, that's the problem. Like what? 58 is a function instead of function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we're not even there yet. Look at, we still have these look at the baby problems still yet. 26. Or do we really have to do 24? I just want it because it's even. No, you know what? I need something to check on Tuesday. We're not going over that. Because that's, okay, let's do 26. It says find the RV theta. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to change it to x's instead. It doesn't matter what variables you use. I'm just going to do this. Okay? So take the derivative. Well, what do I see? I see something times something. Got to use product rule, right? Okay, so how does the product rule work? Derivative of the first. Now, what is the first one? Secant box. The derivative of secant box. Secant box, tangent box, times the derivative of box. Two. Then you leave the second one alone. Plus, now you leave the first one alone, secant 2x, times the derivative of the second one. Now, what is the second one? Tangent box. The derivative of tangent box is secant squared box times the derivative of box. And I will leave this simplifying to you. All you have to do is factor out a 2 secant x. OK, I'll do it. You factor out a 2 secant, what's going to be left? Can't even do that? <laughs> Tangent squared 2x plus secant squared 2x. And then A, you somebody, you, yeah. you somebody. One. No. Negative one. Warner, <laughs> you somebody. Young, you somebody. <laughs> Simon, Lee. I don't know. No, the answer is you not somebody. Uh. That's the answer. <laughs> you guys, if it's not one. See, you guys see, you guys don't even know your trick identities. It's tangent squared plus one equals secant squared. Oh my gosh. That's nobody. Nobody. <laughs> okay, two more questions. And then you guys gotta just finish this up. What's hard? Man? Okay, wait. What about where you gotta find the second derivative? What about you no no no, you know what? You guys gotta do that. Now that you know how it works. Okay, now what about 51? Everybody here can do 51? No, not over there. Okay. Now, there are several forms of the chain rule. Okay, I, I just taught you the one we learned last time. Okay, here is the chain rule. If y equals f of g of x, right? Well, what is y prime equal to? Remember I wrote it on the board in a box last time? Very good. Mark, I'm impressed. This is the chain rule right here. Do you think you need to memorize this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, if you don't, how, let me ask you this then. How are you going to do problem 58 then? <clears throat> that was the problem, Mr. Park. Okay? But there's another form of the chain rule. Leibniz's form of the chain rule. dy dx is equal to dy dt times dt dx. In fact, this is, this is why it's called the chain rule. Except this is a short chain. You guys see it? No. In Leibniz's form of the derivative, you can treat it like regular fractions. 
Okay, if you were to just multiply these two fractions together, what would happen? Wouldn't you cancel out the dt's and what would you get? dy dx. So with Leibniz's form of the chain rule, you can just treat it like everyday fractions. So this is just a short chain, okay? But what if you had a longer chain like this? dy dx is equal to dy dt times dt dw times dw dq times dq dm times dm dx. You see, now the chain is just longer now. We got more links in the chain. But you can treat it like fractions, because if you were to multiply these five fractions together, what would you do? And then you get dy over dx, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's attempt number 51. Didn't the book explain this? Yeah. See, Simon is smart. He said probably. <laughs> S equals cosine <laughs> theta. It says compute the STT when theta is equal to 3 pi over 2 and d theta dt equal 5. Okay. Well, if I'm going to compute the STT according to the chain rule, then isn't the STT equal to the S d theta times d theta dt? Yes or no? Because you can cancel out the d thetas. Yes or no? Yes. Yes, okay. This is what we're trying to find. So in order to find this, I have to figure out this and this. Okay, so ds dt is equal to ds d theta. Now look at this equation. What is ds d theta? Negative sine theta. Right? Okay, let me ask you this. If you had y equal cosine x, what is dy over dx equal to? negative sine x. So if I just change the variables, is that going to throw you off? Apparently it, apparently it is. Okay? Times d theta dt. Okay? So to compute this, I have to know, I have to be able to multiply this. So when theta is 3 pi over 2, plug it in here. What is sine of 3 pi over 2? Negative 1. Negative 1, negative. 1. So here, negative, negative 1, and then d theta dt is given as 5. So what's your final answer? Five. You, so the thing is, you can treat these like regular fractions. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, and then some people had questions on 58. Which one's on 58? We had problems like this before. You take the derivative and then you look up the numbers in the chart, yeah? You. C. You just used the quotient rule down. This is like easier than the last test we took. <laughs> Are you serious, 58 C? My dog can do this one. <laughs> Spot. Okay, I see a quotient. I'm just going to simply use the quotient rule. I can't believe we're doing that. Low D high minus high D low. All over denominator squared we go. <laughs> Boy, what did you do? No, finish. Not use the quotient rule. <laughs> How can we not use the quotient rule at this point in our lives? Yeah. Okay, why don't we pick a problem where you actually have to use the chain rule? Okay, F. Okay, now you have to use the chain rule. You have g of x plus f of x to the negative 2. So what do I see? I see box to the negative 2. Do, do we know how to do that now? After all the yeah, examples we did. Two. Negative 2 box, box to the negative 3, negative three times. times the derivative of the box. Now, what's in the box? How do I take the derivative of g of x plus f of x? g prime x plus f prime x. And then you just plug in the numbers that they give you and look it up in the chart. Okay, but what about number E or D? Somebody better pick one. Oh. No, they're both the same, that's why. One is f of g of x, the other one is g of f of x. D. Which one? D. As an elephant. Okay, there's whatever. 
Okay, how do you take the derivatives of g of f of x? Uh, we use the chain rule. So what is it? G prime, g prime of f of x times the derivative of box, which is f prime of x. Plug in the numbers, look it up on the chart. I'm telling you right now, this, this is on the clue, so you don't even have to ask. That's on the clue. Yeah, but you know what? It's on the worksheet tonight. So tonight's worksheet is just like the quiz. If you can do the worksheet, you're going to be able to do the quiz. It's like a practice quiz. Then. But you guys just needed more work, as I can tell you guys are just, you guys uh, what? Now, I'm just curious. What's going to happen to you when the same thing happens next year when you're in college? What are you going to do? Call you up. Get you there. <laughs> you know, you guys know Andrew Wong from last year? Yeah. He went to MIT. MIT. <laughs> Sent me an email earlier this week. Is that the picture of his score? What score? The one that was. Oh, finish your score. Anyway, he sent me an email. He said, Mr. Park, I'm taking calculus and it's so hard. Can you do my homework for me and send it back to me by Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> no, I said, don't be ridiculous. Oh, and that's all I said. Wait, 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 he got this score on one of his quizzes that was like, it was out of 260. But I think he got something for like, like 20 out of 260. Huh? Yeah, like 20 out of 260. Yeah. Oh my. Oh, that's so, uh, I'm not looking forward to you. So what do you got English major? He was going to go to like a new one. He got an 80 out of 260. <laughs> I laugh at that. <laughs> It's better than <laughs> So what are you gonna do next year? Like, like, let's say you didn't get a sufficient explanation in class because of one reason or another. Google. What are you gonna do? Google. You better learn to read the book, sister. <laughs> okay, we're done with this. So I'm gonna collect this. Does everybody understand? So I'm gonna give you like 10 minutes to ask questions on the worksheet. And I'm, probably all of it is going to be like simplified. That's what I do. It's going to be simple. Mr. Park, I couldn't simplify it. Like this. You somebody one. And then, and then that doesn't work, try negative. What is that? What is that? I give it to you. It's happy to simplify it. So yes, you will have an opportunity to ask questions. But it's not all. If you have like questions on all of them, then you better come in for help, brother. Brother. <laughs> okay, let's do the test so we actually have time to watch. Do we? Are we gonna even have time to watch any of the movie? Let's sing.